we've we said a long time ago that we would try and clean up the show. We're growing up, right? Sure. Uh, yeah. But mm -hmm. a trending hashtag is a trending hashtag. And right. I think that's news. Uh oh. And this we do, we do we cover news on this show. Mm-hmm. That's what have I you heard about hashtag poopgate? I have not. No. Okay. I there was a secondary hashtag, and don't kill the messenger, but it was hashtag poopy pants Joe Biden. Did did Uncle Joe? Okay, all right. Okay. I'm, 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 here. I'm ready to I'm ready what, to what see happened? where this goes. <laughs> so conservative Twitter <laughs> okay. started this rumor that whilst visiting the Holy See in Vatican City, Joe the Biden, Holy See, the Pope, isn't that what they call him? I don't know. I've What's, always called them what the would Pope. C be for? I don't know. I feel like maybe we're getting off track, though. I thought you were referring to Vatican City as the Holy See for City. <laughs> <It's like> the... <laughs> there, there you go. That'd be solid. We'll look it up. I'm pretty sure they call him that. Anyway, um, so Joe here. Biden is visiting the Pope. Yeah, a two-hour visit in the Vatican. Apparently, that's a very long time to visit uh, the Vatican for a head of state. And he went in wearing one color suit and came out wearing a different color suit. And uh, word mm. passed in the street. You know, you know how Italians are. It just it it just passed in the streets <laughs> like wildfire that this happened. <laughs> and yeah, and conservative Twitter picked it up. And there there have been like Snopes things about it, and you know they're like mostly untrue. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a biden charted so so where thing. did this come from i guess i'm confused about what how did this like what is the truth that this potential rumor is based on i know a blue check said that <laughs> biden was it's spending a, a little check. more time in the at the vatican it went long because there was some sort of I forget if the term they used was bathroom issue or what. His ass crack had to be. No, power -washed. you know what? I I'm gonna, I'm gonna call bullshit on this because they're like. Oh, look it up now. The White House, White House staff are these are seasoned professionals who know who they're dealing with, and they wouldn't bring like two Biden, colored they, suits. Biden definitely travels with a backup poop suit, and they would not bring a different colored. Yeah. Poop suit to the Vatican. Like this is a this is a thing that they are ready for with the exact same color of suit. Um, I can, I'm, in fact, I would wager that this has happened several times and we don't know about it because his staffers are so on top of it with the backup poop suits. Um, I, I think I just, that I think that that kind of I think that that discredits this theory. Right? It must have been something else. Well, myth busted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah sounds yeah. seems like it to me i mean it, yeah it seems like i'm looking at flo's face as she's looking this up and it is perfect <laughs> <laughs> i just like well some of it doesn't make sense um for the reasons that skylar already pointed out like why wouldn't your backup suit just be identical to the suit you're wearing that seems like a good thing to have just like just i mean uh, poop aside like you spill something on your outfit, and but that was your outfit for the day, and you planned on all your pictures and things around it. Like that's somebody's job to make sure like he's looking good and the lighting is right and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So I just I just don't see a situation where his backup outfit isn't the same as the outfit he's wearing, or like he doesn't have an extra shirt in the case he spills coffee. And also it's Joe Biden, so he's obviously gonna spill coffee. In fact, he probably doesn't get to drink his coffee with a shirt on for that reason. So I just we'll be sure. That, that 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 seems a little odd to me, but I'm. I also feel very, like. I feel very protective of this story because as a runner, I definitely have had to poop in a lot of places that 
I didn't um, intend to. And one of those times when I was in a neighborhood where there was literally nowhere to get cover, I actually did have to poop on myself. The Vatican. I had no options. And so not that the Vatican doesn't have bathrooms or anything like that. I'm just simply saying that like, you know, we just love you think that Joe Biden was at the Vatican <laughs> running a marathon. And I, mm-hmm. I just have happened. sympathy for the fact that sometimes you don't control your bowels, your bowels control you. <laughs> yeah. He was just like appreciating La Pieta <laughs> and it the it just hit him, you know. What can you do? Let me let me both sides this thing real quick and ask you guys this question. Yeah. Do you think that there was a single day during the Trump presidency where he made it until noon without pooping in his pants a little bit? Yeah, I mean, there were all sorts of every orifice. There was like something going on there. It's like this is a man who like lives on McDonald's and diet. This is like a a man and he's like in his 70s, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who lives on an incredibly unhealthy diet and never exercises. Like I guarantee you there were some poop, um, some POTUS poop emergencies that happened frequently uh, with with 45. I just think we need to normalize poop emergencies. I'm not with that. I'm not ready for that. <laughs> really? I, th- I think she might be right. <laughs> Everybody has those. Uh, poop emergencies. Everybody poops. And they will become different... more and more frequent the older we get. The older we get, absolutely. I'm no like... Sunrise Movement kid anymore. I can't. Right, right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just pointing out that... You know, my poop emergencies are largely exercise related at this point of my no, life. No, my poop emergencies are exercise related. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm a fancy athlete. I only hashtag, poop when I'm running. Hashtag poop privilege. But <laughs> at some point, okay, at some point, my, you know, it, it may become something not as related to my exercise and it just may become a thing that happens and yeah my poop you sneeze are... you know like sneeze boom. related poop emergencies i'm thinking like see i'm more on let's the train not say that's like, not a thing no one's I sure think, it's a thing I, like i think you gotta you know I, i'm not trying to like poop shame anybody but i think there's some things that you kind of keep to yourself and you know you don't you don't claim them as like a prideful thing that you're doing. And I think I love to talk about sharding. is one of those things. I, I feel like I we need call to me normalize it. I, I feel like they're making, I mean, like we have, obviously have depends as you get mm-hmm. older because you just can't, you know, you don't know when things are going to happen. And that's but the But you wear them the under your pants because you don't want people to know what you're doing with them. Well, no, because we wear pants. We just simply don't wear underwear and like Winnie the Pooh our lives, right? But like, if we did, like- I prefer porky pigging. But also a porky- Winnie yeah, the Pooh, okay. Donald Ducky. <laughs> but, yeah. but, then, but then there's also the like, now they make the cute depends, right? They do, the ones that look like actual chonies. <laughs> they look like real underwear, right? Yeah. Like, they're recognizing that like, you know, we're going to need this, but maybe we don't want to wear white. discreet. Yeah. Love it. I you can wear Flo has and fully turned me on this topic. <laughs> and <laughs> with nearly 10 minutes into our intro, I think we filled our poop quota for the quarter. We filled our depends to the Yeah, brain. I think <laughs> our depends are overflowing. Let's start the show. <laughs> Until next time. <laughs> we say the things they say. Voices come from those dead. All the voices heard. Voices, things we say. Voices, they're in your head. All the voices heard. Hello, everyone. You have Kempa. And you have Skylar. And you have Shannon. I love it. Oh, it's such a rarity when we can have the full house again. It just, it feels real good uh, yeah. when we've got that going. Um, and we didn't so, know how good we had it during COVID. You know? Yeah. 
back when we couldn't leave our homes and <laughs> yeah, those were the good old remember days. how great that was this was our only social life remember that <laughs> <laughs> that was so good my social life was also going to work every day that's true you actually had to go to work so did flo well not flo totally worked late. from home um, yeah that's true but she was employed that is correct unlike me at the time Anyway, I the whole time I spoke about it extensively. On the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, how is everyone? Mm. Doing all right, great, so good, so, so good. good. That's really what I was good. waiting for. So yeah, good. Good. I just got back from vacation, so I'm feeling all right. Yeah, can I ask where you went? You didn't. You didn't tell me. I got. I was worried. <laughs> you were worried about me um i went and laid on a beach and put my phone on airplane mode for eight days and it was glorious and i strongly recommend it if you are able because it was nice to not have to think about anything and to just lay out and let the waves and i listened to five books um i went all full steam on the fun books and also like the polar opposite books <laughs> so oh, i read cool. i read both the god delusion and the shack in the same like several days <laughs> and it was a really fun ride i i strongly recommend <laughs> uh you are also you being, are you intentionally not disclosing the location of this beach that you were at oh yeah, no i went with um my family to puerto plata and i was there for eight days yeah oh fun you uh you also during this time left the king's group chat and i was deeply offended when i saw that <laughs> i wasn't really participating so i figured that was a good i was like i don't know why i'm hanging out in here anymore yeah, like, I, like I, I i go to games i'm not i'm not a deep cut person i need to i need to go ahead and just let the real fans enjoy themselves whatever we have your husband to ourselves now so i'm cool with that <laughs> um well let's get started on the show today uh now that that we've really really exhausted the table, uh, that intro yeah yeah. Mm. yeah we really set the table for this one we did i i feel real good about this one uh so to begin i mean let's you know let's talk to the person who's a doctor now uh and less slightly less scatological although that is a symptom uh why don't we do a little COVID update uh, on how things are going in California and throughout the U.S. Sort of what are what's the news of the day, Doctor Flo, resident epidemiologist? Sure. Um, so when we look at, I'll start with um, California data, and um, in general, our cases have been um, kind of, you know, we were trending up, um, obviously at the beginning of the year, and then we've kind of, you know, we we trended up again when June came around, and Delta variant, and we're not continuing to trend up. Um, so that part is good. We're seeing um, some, you know, pockets, but in terms of the state overall we're not trending up and in fact we were one of the first states um you know that kind of was able to move ourselves down into the next tier down from it being just like widespread um dissemination everywhere we also have higher than most most um states in terms of our vaccine um rates so that part is also um promising in terms of managing a pandemic that feels pretty good to hear yeah uh, there is also the fact that the holidays are starting up again. The worst of the worst surges that we had um, was this time last year when people, they just couldn't take it anymore. They were like, I'm going to go visit my family during the holidays. And this was a good two, three months before the vaccine was out there. Should we expect? I'm just going to say like, I just to, just to, spoiler alert for everybody i bought i have recently purchased um airfare for the holiday season which almost certainly means that a giant wave of covid is about to resurface uh so i'm sorry to everyone for uh plunging us into that with my reckless purchase of airline tickets i went to a conference in nashville back in august and the two friends i went with both got covid uh 
and they're both fully vaccinated. Like you just, I don't know. I get nervous about this stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, what should we expect for? Yeah, so I mean, the projections for the state are that, you know, if if things, you know, if people continue to wear masks and do some distancing, that will probably end up, you know, uh, seeing some uptick during the holidays, but not a major uptick. Um, so we're thinking, you know, in terms of like daily infections and that sort of thing, like, you know, maybe doubling where we are right now, as opposed to, you know, <laughs> do like be, it being 10 times higher than where we are right now. So um, the hope is that we, we anticipate anytime you're going to have people gathering that you're likely to have some uptick in infections, but we're hoping to that some of that will be um, tempered by vaccines, some of that will be tempted, tempered by masks, some of that will be tempered um, just by, um, you know, just by, by people kind of engaging in those precautions and of course having, you know, been vaccinated. So, yeah, we'll see. Can we, can we look now into th this is kind of the big news i guess of the day or of the week mm -hmm. uh by i think it's like november 8th they will now be rolling out vaccines for ages 5 to what is it 11 12 5 to 11 yeah 12 and up has already been approved. okay uh what does this mean uh so a few things. Um, what it means is that obviously now we have kids over five being able, everybody over five being eligible to be able to get a vaccine. Um, obviously, it falls under the same emergency use that um, you know the other vaccines had when they first came out. Um, but I, the big story right now is about what's going to happen with schools because in California, our governor announced at the beginning of October um, that there will be a vaccine mandate similar to some of the other vaccines that are required for school. Um, there obviously are religious and medical exemptions um, for that, but in but there's not the like, you know, just I don't want to get the vaccine kind of ex exemption. Um, so for those who are not vaccinated, um, that's going to create some challenges. And then Sac City Unified School District actually ahead of um, Newsom's January 1 um, potential uh, for that policy to go in place is going to have one starting um, November 30th. And so those students that are not um, that are not vaccinated uh, by January 31st, I think, will be put into um, like an alternative kind of school situation um, where they're not doing in-person learning. So uh, that's another, you know, conversation that we have to have about what's the impact of that, and you know, is that gonna, is that education, you know, opportunity going to have parity, and are there enough teachers to be able to cover that? Because we currently have, I heard the number was I think seven hundred students who don't currently have a teacher. Um, what? So wow. yeah, so I'm I'm not sure exactly how this is going to work. So. Yeah, there, there are some serious outstanding questions. Um, for the statewide uh, um, um, vaccine mandate for all public grade school students, um, it will go into effect when, when those vaccines are fully approved by the FDA. So we're anticipating that's going to happen for the 12 to 17 year olds um, sometime you know, in the next um, actually couple of days. Um, and then uh, for the five to 11 group, it'll be several months away because they're just getting to the emergency use authorization. So it'll take a while before they're fully approved. I think this is going to go really well. I think parents yeah. are going to love it. Yeah, I I foresee yeah. this being a completely yeah. smooth process with no... Uh, Agree. Yeah. yeah. No, no problems. Yeah. Just going to be... Can't imagine sure. what, I can't imagine what issues might arise. Yeah, I mean, with to all be fair, this. there have always been parents who like, don't want to get their kids vaccinated yeah, against like yeah. measles and tuberculosis. Is tuberculosis, do we vaccinate against that? No, we no. do not do we TB do in the United States. We only test. Other countries do do TB um, vaccines, and it's then a little bit confusing because then you can't test them. You can't have a skin test, yeah. right? You have to do x ray tests. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm in way over my head. I don't even know what that is. Skin test for TB. Yeah, so it's where they do the little bubble test, and then you come back and you they um and then you check to see the they size. Read they read it based on your exposure. Um, so 
certain sizes. Yeah. Certain sizes indicate. Huh. Can I request a TB vaccination? If you um, want to try not- to get into homeless programs in Sacramento, you can. Yeah, I was going to say, typically the TB um, vaccine is not administered in the U.S. You, I'm sure you can access oh. it somewhere, but it's not like, a, it's not a standard vaccine in the U.S. Okay. Yeah, I didn't mean you can request the vaccine. I meant oh, testing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. TB testing, yeah. You can request. And can there are I some people- TB? Um, you could, you, you, and you could go in like, they had used to have the chicken pox party. You could go and try to get it. <laughs> chicken and... pox party. Oh, yeah. forgot about that. Is that another thing? Did I hear correctly, Flo, that like we're past, we've we've gone beyond chicken pox? Could, like we have a vaccine for that. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. We do. It's called, it's the varicella um, vaccine and it. Um... That's bullshit. That sucks. <laughs> right? If I had to suffer through that. I got shingles at 32, man. Like, I was gonna, yeah, but now I've actually like there's the chickenpox vaccine, but I've heard younger folks getting shingles. I don't want shingles. Give me that as soon as I can get the shingles vaccine. You can have whichever butt cheek you want. Well, that's chickenpox. I know what it is. Oh, <laughs> I don't want it. It's in you. I, I think we're a little off track here. No, uh, uh, not us. <laughs> what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, kids getting their COVID vaccine. Yes. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I anticipate that to have a whole lot of problems. I was uh, talking to a friend today who says that, you know, the Pfizer, that's the one that needs the cold freezer, right? Um, yeah, so so the Pfizer and Pfizer needs the the deep cold storage. I can't remember if Moderna does too. And there's like cold storage deep, and deep cold storage and then standard refrigerator storage and they're not all the same. Right. Um, but yes. But so there's going to be some challenges in rollout for kids with that. Uh, I think the doses are smaller because apparently children, correct me if I'm wrong, are smaller. Uh, and so like- No, per, I've heard of this too. Yeah, per vial, instead of uh, six doses, there's gonna be 10. So like you're trying to like plan out for 10 doses per vial that you're like unfreezing. I don't know, it's a whole, it's gonna logistically be a different thing, right? Like. Um, what does this say for COVID numbers in the coming months and and year? Like, will this, is that a game changer vaccinating five to 11 year olds? Um, so five to 11 year olds obviously don't make up the, you know, vast majority of cases or deaths. Um, but you know, you, you do have to, to wonder about, you know, intergenerational homes and the exposure risk, right? So they're not the main ones, you know, even with Delta variant, we saw an uptick in in children getting sick and even some children dying, but they weren't the main ones being impacted. Um, so, you know, I don't want to describe them as vectors because their health matters too. And we don't still, we still don't know the long-term impact of COVID on people. And so I think we're getting comfortable with like, but did you get hospitalized? But did you die though? And that's like our questions. And it's like, yeah, there could be, you know, other implications for the for the infection. And so we don't want to take to be casual and cavalier about it. But I also do think in terms of seriousness, um, both short and long term, we do have to think about like who do children live with um, and might they be living with immune compromised adults and, you know, other people who are at higher risk. And so I think this could significantly help with the overall transmission rate because you have, you know, now more of an entire family potentially being able to be um, vaccinated and that obviously lowering everybody's, um, you know, risk for infection and then also, you know, the risk for severity of disease if infected. So that's an important, so you know, contribution. Important. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, let's bring it into the one thing everyone's talking about today, boosters. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. Now, I was a Johnson & Johnson guy, mm-hmm. and I looked up the numbers on Johnson & Johnson. If you got it as long ago as I did in March, boy, are those bad. 
as far <laughs> as protection against COVID at this point goes. I heard, I think I heard Fauci say that if he, he they should have done two of those too. Yeah, so the, the current recommendation when it comes to boosters is um, Johnson & Johnson is actually the only COVID booster that's recommended for everyone at least two months after their vaccination. Um, so that they're, that's basically saying like, in order to kind of get your your level of protection up to where you know to be comparable um, to the others, we need to we need a second dose. Um, so and it was never as effective as the others, but there obviously there it's still a good vaccine in terms right. of its ability to be better than doing nothing. Um, but now they you know the vaccines have started to separate themselves. Even Pfizer and Moderna are not showing up in the same way, um, with Pfizer's immunity seeming to wane a little faster than Moderna's. Um, Damn it! Again, we don't know if that's clinically meaningful yet, but that seems to be where we are. So the booster the booster conversation has brought up a couple of issues. The first one is like, like I'll start with the, the macro level issue, which is we still have large, you know, parts of the planet that have not gotten access to first doses. To their first, and so right. we are talking about boosters in a developed nation where we think it is an infringement on our rights to have to wear masks and to have for those who have homes, the privilege of working from them. Right. So there is that conversation that has happened about just like global vaccine equity and whether or not this makes sense from a resource perspective, because if we have the ability to have all of these vaccines, why are we not, you know, engaging other places that have much lower overall vaccination rates when there are lots of us who are refusing to get a first shot? So that's the first um, conversation. Then there is the question of who actually needs a booster. Um, we do see some waning immunity. We obviously know that the, the level of protection offered to everybody is not going to be the same based on your baseline health and just how reactive your immune system is. And so in general, the, the boosters have been recommended for those who are over 65 or over 50 and have some sort of other underlying risk factor or have some sort of like immune, immune compromised condition that would um, would make this seem necessary. Um, and again, that's the, with the exception of Johnson & Johnson because it was one shot and they're recommending a booster for everyone. Yeah, it, if you're above 18, even if you don't have immunocompromised, like they're like, get a booster. Yep, yep. Yeah. And- and then the other, you know, conversation is the mix and match conversation, which is now they are saying, you know, it can be helpful to, you know, have a Pfizer and a Moderna or a Johnson and Johnson and a Moderna, you know, you can kind of switch it up um, because that, that may be helpful. So th the CDC didn't Gotta catch them all. That. Yeah. They didn't recommend it, but they just didn't um, prohibit it. I think I got, honestly, I think those are I think those ones are kind of played out. I'm really I'm getting into the obscure vaccination game now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like we've all everybody's been doing Pfizer and Moderna and Johnson and Johnson this whole time and it's played out. I need a fresh flavor. Um uh. so I'm really I'm getting into uh the obscure vaccine market and so far is going great. Yeah, with my next shipment of absinthe, I'm actually getting an AstraZeneca coming out from Europe too. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about that. Oh, dope. Mm -hmm. Watching Flo's face go from this is going to be an actual conversation to <laughs> shit. This is Skyler. Oh, I missed Skyler. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I, I forgot who I'm talking to. Right. So that's ah, why I, just... I see what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh. Yep. Okay. I got the Pfizer booster though. And I feel good about getting that. Um, Wait, are again, we allowed to get boosters yet? Because I thought it was still, if you aren't like in a, I guess, you know, you may you may be in a risky environment, but I thought that if you weren't in a risky environment, if you're under 65, you're not supposed to get them yet. Is that right? Except Johnson and Johnson. Yeah, I'm Johnson and Johnson. Wow. So yeah. Oh, wow, you're one of those Johnsons. Exactly. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, Johnson so I got and Johnson boosters for everybody. The Pfizer and Moderna boosters only if you're in specific or if you have job related um exposures right, right. which even that is a little bit controversial um because you know some some people are worried that 
people don't really need, you know, boosters, uh, you know, young, otherwise healthy adults, just because their only qualification was their job. Um, and, you know, uh, there are some, you know, epidemiologists who are concerned about essentially opening those people up to like serious side effects from another dose if they were already adequately protected, because of course, every dose, I mean, even though the serious side effects are rare, and often pretty limited, um, you know, you obviously are, you know, <laughs> are increasing the likelihood of that the more shots you get. So there's just been some questions about like, should we be doing this for people who don't seem to have a, a need in the same way? Mm-hmm. I tell you what, I'm boosted. Mm-hmm. When do you get your boost? Oh, uh, Tuesday. Last Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> uh, That's do, how my I, mom says it. <laughs> I, d- I got, I stayed brand loyal to Moderna. I do not recommend. But I got Not feeling it. good? <clears throat> no. Um, I got it at the same time as I got my flu shot. I got boosted and, and flu shot, one in each arm. So flu-sted. I was- I got, I got flu stid. I was unable to use my arms for like 14 hours, um, which was super fun. Like picking up a water bottle was uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, I got to say the Pfizer went in a lot smoother than Johnson. That like that was spicy. This was like I didn't even know she did anything to me. I had an excellent both the the person that did my flu shot and the booster they were both great great ex- wait, wait did, a- did they did they do them at the same time it was two people no i went to like two different stations oh. just needles everywhere i was hoping they were like all right They're hold still like, bam, bam. <laughs> <laughs> no it's always the thing like I sit down and I'm like, I don't like needles. So I'm going to turn away while you do this. Please don't tell me when you're going to do it. Cause I don't, the whole thing is not fun. They're like, your, your arms are covered in tattoos. What do you mean? You don't like needles. And I'm like, Oh God, can you just get, can you just do the thing, please? I don't know. I, yeah, I'm still experiencing, I'm still not feeling 100 after getting those injections flusted um it's been a week yeah i'm someone who doesn't have a great immune system like when everybody else gets the cold gets a cold i get like bronchitis like walking pneumonia gosh that turns into like a like ear nose and throat infection and i need all the antibiotics which is part of the reason why I got boosted, but yeah, it's not, I don't, I don't love it. Yeah. So what, you know, do, do what you want with that information. Well, I guess let's ask Dr. Flo kind of, I don't know what comes next in, in this whole, you know, storyline that we've all been living collectively throughout the world right like we are uh rounding out two years in this new reality um what should we expect is kind of coming next is there anything different well from my vantage point i think everybody is kind of waiting with bated breath to see how the holidays go this year right because Last year, we had this big uptick in cases in the summertime, and we were like, oh, the peak, and then we were sliding down the peak, and then literally November, December, and January, we're like, hold my beer um, and all my other belongings because I'm going to knock this one out of the park, right? So I... You know, so I think everybody is like, oh, we've kind of made it through this year. We saw this little uptick in the summer. Are we in for what we were before? Or are we going to see sort of like a similar summer uptick kind of thing around the holidays? And I think that will begin to tell us a little bit more about where we are and what we're looking at for the long haul. Like so much of this is us trying to anticipate what's going to happen and what we're going to need to do. And I think 
we're now at a place where we might be a little bit closer to better being able to predict like what what is the new normal because we've done the like oh we're gonna get back to exactly the way we were super soon haha ha, no we're not oh maybe we try again okay maybe some of these things stay and some of them don't and this is what's like kind of safe and I think we're all just still guessing about what we're going to be able to do and how we can live our lives and so I do think like getting through to February or March and being able to look back retrospectively and say okay what happened there and what does that look like will better tell us like are we going to wear masks in certain places and not others for the rest of our lives? Like what things are kind of here for good and what things are we able to do now in a different way? That's part of our new normal. Yeah. I generally hope we just have a different relationship with masks moving on. Yeah. Right. I mean, I when I first met you Flo, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was sitting next to you for like a full day and I had a very bad cold and I think you handed me a mask and were trying to make me to wear it. And I don't think I did. <laughs> you thought it was so weird. And I did. That was some, <laughs> uh, yeah, that was some freak, of, freak for even offering it. I was not a, like a full-time mask wearer back then. So I don't want to make it seem like I was like some sort of soothsayer. But I did be I did believe in like, if you had to be out while you were sick um, and we were, we did have a mandatory no it was classes a compulsory yeah, yeah. thing that if, you ha if you're in those situations and you're not feeling well, throw on a mask. But I also, to Dave's point, I was young that one time for wearing my mask when I was in the middle of a cold and wasn't sure if I was still infectious and <laughs> someone literally was like take that mask off you're scaring people and it really annoyed me because I was like what if I like was going through chemo or something yeah. and like was wearing yeah. my own protect like it was just such an inappropriate response from somebody you know that I didn't really know uh, we were like in the same space but we weren't like this was not a friend or a colleague and but that was people's response to it, it was like this is this weird thing that why would I do it so I got I definitely thought it was right. super weird I live like when I saw folks wearing masks like before COVID I, I, I would do the thing where I'd be like, that's weird. That's an overreaction. You don't need to be doing that. Um, and yeah, uh, have, come, have, have definitely uh, come around on the mask idea. I'm now, yeah, I, I, with you guys, I hope that this is something that we just, I, I think everybody should wear them in public from October to March. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like every year, why not? Let, let's go for it. It's been yeah. great not to be sick. Right. Yeah, it's True. been really nice. The flu, common colds, all those things are down. So it's nice. All right. Yeah. Those are good Rocks. points. Well, I guess that's a good way to round that topic out. <laughs> Why don't we, I mean, we got a couple other ones to talk about. Should we do Strike Tober? Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. Okay. So. This month has been named Striketober. Uh, throughout the U.S., uh, folks in many industries, from John Deere to Kellogg's cereal, people have been striking, um, pushing back against, you know, uh, sort of uh, labor issues, there's labor safety issues, wage issues, all of these things. Um, this is also happening during a time when uh, these very same workers just spent a year and a half putting their lives on the line, right? Uh, when the, the rest of us were, were told to, to, we had to stay home. And during the pandemic, uh, once more, we should never forget, a million American billionaires got $1.2 trillion richer. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's no surprise that this is happening, right? Um, my, my favorite strike I, sign I saw was for Kellogg's and it had Tony the Tiger and it said, strike. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, what are we looking at here? What is, what's going on? Is this significant? Is there a real labor movement happening that will lead us into, uh, you know, a, a great workers uh, renaissance? I don't know if it'll lead us into a renaissance, but I think there is a big thing happening right now in the labor movement. Um, 
I, I'm not going to like predict or get super optimistic or pessimistic one way or another about how it's going to go. Um, but there, I mean, there does seem to be an incredible amount of solidarity right now yeah. uh, in the labor force in general, which rocks. Um, and that is, unfortunately, I think that is, you know, like, like you were saying, Dave, like a thing that is, that is sort of born out of a bad, like pe things get bad enough and people will band together you know, to push back against it. Um, but it is, I don't know. I think it's very, very heartening to see people push back. Um, did you, this is like sort of, sort of related, but it's one of the more interesting things. And I don't, and not, I know not everybody is like on Reddit all the time, like I am. <laughs> Do you know what the fastest growing subreddit has been over the, like recently? Some sort of porn. Oh, I was gonna say, is it is it the like people quitting their jobs? It's called anti work. It's uh, yeah. it's the anti work <laughs> subreddit, and it has grown. It's like one of the biggest subreddits right now, and it's all, I think, large mostly service industry uh, folks, and the whole thing is just them being like here's a screenshot of me quitting my job via text and telling yep. my boss to fuck oh. himself. Yes. Um, yeah. Like, you know, here's what's happening to me at work. What should we do? And just thousands of people being like, get the hell out. You're better than like, they're not, you're better than they're treating you, you know? And it is like, I mean, I don't know. I'm also someone who maybe applies, who gets too optimistic about things like this and maybe applies more significance than I should to them. But like there, I, I like, thousands like like tens or hundreds of thousands of people in this thing it is like a tremendous force of solidarity amongst people who feel like they're being screwed by their like bosses at their minimum wage jobs and i have never seen so many people centralized all pumping each other up about it and it is i don't know that i think that's very exciting i i'm i have yeah. i take a lot of heart from the anti-work subreddit um yeah. It is very fun. It's a very fun response to all of the, like, because everybody's been seeing all the signs, of, you know, that are on the shops, like, oh, you know, the government's been paying everybody and nobody wants to work, for, uh, you know, nobody wants to work and do a day's work for a day's pay anymore and blah, 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 right. blah, blah, blah. And this is just this response that's like, nah, we're not doing that anymore. Sorry. You know? Yeah. Yeah. We're and done with that. Because it's also not a day's pay. Um, right. right. Yeah. Exactly. They've been calling it the great <laughs> resignation, which I love. Um, <laughs> I have just found that so amusing and just following it. Um, but yeah, a lot of people are just saying this, this doesn't make sense. What's interesting though, is that some of the narrative around nobody wants to work anymore. A, it's obviously, you know, wage and conditions based. Um, mm -hmm. but then there's also been this question of like, is it even real? Because I know at least, and, and this is like, just kind of, it's somewhat anecdotal, but somewhat like quasi experimental data but there was a person who put out like 60 resumes for all of these you know no no like um experience required jobs and only got like you know two callbacks and like you know three emails or something so there's this you know ringing of the hands about oh we can't find anybody to work but then there are people putting in applications and not seeming to get the number of calls back that one might expect given the narrative that's being spun so there there is a little bit of a question of like what's what's really going on here and the person um in this uh instance like specifically said that they only applied for jobs where they said like help wanted or now hiring or those kinds of things where they were like actively looking for people so i don't know yeah. and submitted resumes you know indicating like these would be my qualifications that should be like competitive for these positions. Right. I've seen similar ones where people have been doing experiments where they're like, yeah, I will start tomorrow, but I want to be paid $20 an hour. Mm -hmm. right. And you just, you just yeah. get zero traction with that. Cause everybody with that sign in their window is like, no, no, no. I want to pay you as little as I'm legally allowed right. to. It's like, have you seen, what was that city? I, I, man, I should have looked this up before the show. There's a city recently that responded to the, like, so the quote unquote labor shortage by legalizing, uh, it, they made it legal for people as young as 14 to work until 11 p.m. at night. Uh, which that was my, was I believe that's my home state. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Yeah, I there's I love I love 
that part of this country where like we respond to a bunch of people not wanting to go to work by being like, well, what if we relax the child labor laws? Uh-huh. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's not Wisconsin, is it? Why do I feel like it would be Wisconsin? It might I mean, be Wisconsin. It might I be. Remember. I'm worried about that. <laughs> yeah, like let them work until like, you know, 2 a.m. or whatever. And then right. get up and go to school tomorrow. Yeah. Shit. But that's like, I, I mean, to Skylar's positive sentiment, I, I, I just, I never ever forget just, in, in, in like it's it's a truism right this has been part of this like the the whole movement like praxis or whatever for ages it's that there's so so many more workers than there are ceos there's so 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 many more and that if you get even a portion of them to come out in numbers and make demands and you know just say not only like demands like they can say like and they have in other countries like oh no this factory's ours now <laughs> you know yeah like it can be done and like there's there's only one like you know smarmy little elon musk tromping around out there right uh, and all those workers could come out and like, you know, really, really show him who's actually making the money there. Uh, and I think this is one of those moments where when you see other folks striking or organizing, it's inspiring to you. And in a country where it hasn't seemed like it was a feasible thing to actually have this sort of movement oriented work happening. Once you see others doing it, then it's like, well, maybe I can too. Maybe, maybe the folks in my industry can too. And then it's just a snowball effect. So to me, that's really exciting. You know, I look at I mean, Bill. It's something's Go ahead, gotta happen, right? Cause we're like, the, like so, something major needs to happen because we like, we, we are seeing that there's there is no movement on any scale to keep wages like con consistent with right. the cost of living anywhere in this country. So that th that's never going to happen for workers in this country. That will never like be legislated just because it's the right thing to do. Um, that's not how it's ever going to work. And it is like, like what is it like? What would the wage? I don't know. I this is like a, you know kind of. 101 stuff but like you know if wages had kept up with the cost of living since what like the 60s or something minimum wage would be like 26 dollars an hour or something right it's right like, it's like not yeah. even it's it's worth it's, repeating though yeah it's not even close um and it is clear after watching like the course of like the con worker conditions deteriorate uh over the core like since the 60s until now that workers are going to have to, they're not going to just, they can't just ask for it. Um, they are going to, they're being put in a position where they will have to take it. Um, and so it, and, and, you know, and so it's inspiring to see people put their hands in their pockets and say, no, I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. You know, yeah. um, no, I will, I'll strike. I will stay home. I'll do whatever. I mean, that's the other side of it, right? Is that like really at the end of the day, the most like one of the most powerful things that you can do as a labor force is just put your hands in your pockets, you know? Um, and it's inspiring to see so many people figuring that out um, and going for it. Cause I think, I think, I don't know. I think it's I mean, great. I'm increasingly of the mind that the, the movement side of it, right? Like the, the building capacity and then saying, hey, everyone, we're going to make a movement towards, you know, renters' rights. You know, this is the thing we're doing this year. I think increasingly that that's, that might be more effective than electoralism generally, than trying to vote in folks. Uh, and like, it's great to have allies in elected and allies in elected office that are like, no, I definitely support that, right? I support rent control, I support all this. But 
I, when I just look at like a state legislature and it's like how many people we'd have to flip, how many people who are just taking all the money from the landlords uh, and like, <clears throat> you know, they do not care about uh, the lower classes here. Um, I don't know. I'm just increasingly. I OK, so like I look at something like uh, AB 616. Do you remember this that mm -hmm. Newsom vetoed it? Uh, it would have allowed farm workers to vote oh, by yeah. mail in union elections. Right. Like it's a no brainer. This actually passed and then Newsom vetoed it and he vetoed it because he's got money interests in, <laughs> in these industries. Right. Um, and so you look at that and you're like, who is really on your side in there? And like, I don't think that has to be, and there are people on your side in there in some of these buildings mm -hmm. but like i don't think that has to be a disheartening thing i think it's like you know we've got each other we can fight we can fight all of this and there are so many more of us than there are of them and the more we tell other folks that and remind each other of that the more that that we can really get done totally agree I think more like I think like most of it to me, and this is I think why it's so inspiring to watch it is that I think when you watch when you watch like a labor movement kind of rise up and and begin to do what it's doing now, what you are watching is like like a sea of people all really starting to realize their worth in like totally. a real major way and be like and 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 at the same time be like like i don't i will settle for nothing less than what i'm worth you know yeah. and that is like yeah. in and in, in a country uh and and kind of in a state to a degree that does not value people in that way at all it is i don't know it's like it's it is very inspiring to watch people stand up and be like like i we don't care what you think like we know what we're worth and we and we will settle for absolutely for nothing less anyway sorry flo i cut you off Oh no, I, I mean I, I appreciated what you were saying because I was I was gonna kind of go in the same, you know, direction that I, I'm I'm echoing your optimism in that I'm hoping that this is something that's not just a, a moment, but is actually a movement. Um and I'm I'm hoping that as people are seeing this happen, they are more willing to get involved and more willing to raise these issues because I think this is one of those things where like the conversation is often dominated by you know these these very conservative talking points around like why should you know somebody be paid this that and the other amount to have you know a what's supposed to be an entry-level job and it's like who who decided that that was entry level other than the barrier for hiring, but somebody has to do those jobs and not everybody there, you know, is a teenager, right? And so- In fact, most of them are not. Most of exactly. the people working those jobs are not teenagers. They are full grown adults with all of the same needs and responsibilities that you have. Correct. Right. And, so, and so I think that a lot of it has been just, a lot of the conversation <laughs> has been kind of dominated by the people who are more likely to have been doing the hiring and less likely to have been personally impacted by oh, yeah. these practices. And so it's nice to be able to see, you know, the narrative now shifting to actually talking to the to people who are impacted and them actually having some power and us hearing their side of the story um, in, in much the same way that this, this happens with a lot of different, you know, conversations where whose whose voice is shaping the narrative then determines how a lot of people think about that issue. Um, and I know a lot of people who wouldn't consider themselves conservative who would say, but what about the small businesses and who can afford to pay that much? And, you know, how is that going to solve the problem and all of these other questions? And it's like, well, it's one piece because sure, if wages go up. I'm, I've been hearing about this happening in Sacramento. Landlords find out and then they say, oh, I'm going to raise your rent by, you know, <laughs> whatever. So it has to be coupled with other protections, but it is a good first place to start or a good place to, to do some work. I shouldn't even say place to start. We need to start in multiple Everywhere. places at the same <laughs> yeah. time yeah i love it i mean that's why people put such a premium on organization right i mean that's why mm -hmm. you you always hear activists talking about organizing because 
if you or if you if people get organized and people kind of get these things lined up, then yeah, there's there's way 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 more of us than there are of them, you know. Yeah. But it's just it's so easy to keep people disorganized and to keep people, you know, kind of on on different pages. And as long as that's going on, it's you know we we can't get it together. But it's it it seems like we're at a point where people are sort of starting to pull it together a little bit. Um, and that I don't know. I think that's I think that's very exciting. I've legitimately, and I know there are people listening who could help with this, have had friends approach me and say, hey, I'm considering organizing my workplace. And like, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe not that serious about it and maybe just like super frustrated with what's going on or whatever, but like they're, they're having... They're having that thought that leads you to that conversation that leads you to, do I want to do the hard work that goes into making that a reality? Um, And so folks who are out there who know how to do it, who know how to organize a workplace, um, please reach out uh, because I would like to connect you with some folks. And uh, for listeners who are considering organizing theirs, um, reach out as well and we'll see if we can make some connections and I think for like for people like on the management side of things continuing to do the work that is like amplifying that like people who are paid and workers who are taken care of really like is it's community care and it like it makes everything work so much better right like it's not I mean if you're working for fucking Amazon you're get like I, I definitely organized but you know working in small spaces especially locally being able to get out there and just be like that squeaky wheel on a management team that says let's listen to Let's listen to the people who aren't paid as much as we are because they're humans too and their needs are the same as ours. Um, and they're also working really hard. So I think there's a way for all of for all of us to um, to be involved in that conversation. Cause I know as like as somebody who finds myself in like the in management, I often think like, how can I support the work of the the worker not that I'm not a worker but you know what I'm saying and it's that advocating for higher pay Mm -hmm. advocating to bring bring all of the people to the table so well um what I am going to do in like right now as my pledge to you is I'm going to work uh to organize some more dollars into this patreon uh account (laughs) shit uh dave if i wanted if i wanted to get into organization on that level uh what would that sound like uh what how would how would i go about uh that kind of an organ organizational effort (laughs) right beautiful question uh that and i'm glad you asked i hate it here i just i just need to say it i hate it here (laughs) we love when we're all back in the room i hate it Mm -mm, i hate it here you know if you want to support uh flow flow's misery uh there's a place (laughs) called patreon.com slash voices river city if you just, love to see flow get disappointed as much as i do if, if you're a sadist for as little as five dollars a month uh you can you can help annoy flow at least once a week uh for an hour it's worth it mm-hmm. um it goes up to 25 bucks a month too uh for the ones that really want to support us those guys yeah y'all get a a mug you get a t-shirt uh uh we are planning on having some patron events sometime soon we're planning on having some public events too uh we uh we just miss you folks and we're excited to to see some of you uh, as long as you're all vaccinated um you know the site is voicesrivercity.com I've got a stage review coming out, but I had I had some Proud Boys attacking me, so it's it's a little late. Uh, but that'll be out there right quick. Um, 
<laughs> and then uh yeah what else i mean we're on the socials facebook voices river city twitter and instagram at voices river city the instagram is super funny uh we we are uh we have a store on our website voicesrivercity.com slash shop uh but really what we're trying to do i don't know like we're just we're just trying to to have conversations that help move things forward for a greater left locally um and that sort of celebrates that greater left that has for so long even in the liberal press uh in this city uh been uh shoved away been ignored been laughed at and and we think that that's absurd and that uh it's really time for for this side uh to to be taken seriously um and so what we try to do is just uplift all the hard work that all the really uh, great folks out there are doing. Um, you know, your APTPs, your NorCal Resists, um, it, the list goes on and on, the Sunrise folks, like, it's just, um, just incredible people. Uh, and so as the election cycle starts up again, which oddly, it feels weird to say uh, the day before an election day, um, but, but the, it, it's really about to start up again. Um, so, you know, folks, feel free to support us how you can, where you can uh, sit in on our teach-ins. I'll be doing some follows the money stuff in the coming months. I'm happy to share that with folks, public records work as well, just empowering people to, to really, uh, really fuck with the man. Um, so that's it. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Uh, my socials. I'm on Twitter at you know Kempo. Why are you K N O W K E M P A? Uh, you can find me barely tweeting these days, but every now and then I do one. Uh, but you can find that rare occasion tweet at guillotine for you. That's guillotine. The number four. Y O U. I'm Shan N D Stevens. And I am Flojan F L O J A U N E. Ah, uh, it feels good to have a full episode with you three. It yeah. does. Let's really uh, let's let's really let's do let, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it a point to try and get a little voices get together going this month. I want to do that once a month. I would love that. Oh yeah, we've been talking about that. Let's do it. So until then, until we see you in person this month, we love you and we want you to stay sane. Stay sane. Stay healthy. And keep a moderate distance until all of our boosters have fully kicked in. <laughs> I like it. <laughs>